where else can you go to church and get Handel's Messiah and rap and dance from Uganda <laughs> in the same service? That's awesome. Don't you love how God is so diverse? Can't you see the parties in heaven? I mean, they literally have got to be all over the map. <laughs> from rejoicing and singing and dancing to worship and on your face. You know, he does it all. Some people like to get caught in one or the other. We're an and in both church. And we're gonna continue to be an and in both church. I can hardly believe that uh, 2015 has left us. Uh, it seems to me that time is ticking faster and faster. I don't know if that's just because I'm getting old or what, but from what I can tell, time is, seems to have picked up speed. In fact, the Bible says that if he doesn't shorten the time, that even the elect could be deceived. Times are short, getting shorter and shorter every day. Here at Word of Life, we're excited about 2016. This next week, we're going to take the week to do prayer and fasting. So all of our usual schedule is usual. It's not normal, which is normal here. Not normal isn't the normal here. So, uh, But we won't be having choir practice, but we will be here praying. We want to meet with all the worship ministries. And I'm going to go through all that at the very end of this so you remember it when you leave. But a week from Monday, we're going to resume choir, and um, there's been an expressed uh, desire for, from some people to actually learn music theory. They can be like Sheila <laughs> and Kathy and all these brilliant people. Anyway, Kathy's going to teach a music theory class. It's open to anybody. It's not just choir members at 7 o'clock on Monday nights. So you're welcome to come to that. You're welcome to stay for choir if you're not in the choir, though, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, Kathy wanted to let you know, give you the heads up so you could plan. You will find in your mailboxes that you have the calendar for the new year. You also have what we're going to announce here towards the end as far as our direction for this next week. So let me, I'm going to try to read probably most of this just because time has gotten away and I want to try to get through it because I feel like the Lord has put some things in my heart that he wants you to hear today. So 2015, it was filled with many successes and miracles. New ministries were launched, established, new members joined our church family, beautiful babies were born, old friends returned. We suffered loss. We lost two great men in this house this year. We've witnessed tragedies in our nation and in other nations that we can't make sense out of. Our world is tumultuous. Fear is the driving force behind governments, between people groups, and in everyday life. Yet every aspect of what we might call normal is being redefined right before our eyes. Our nation is polarized. Racial tensions are on the rise. Politicians are too busy fault-finding rather than being solution-oriented. Honesty, character, humility, and protecting our Constitution is no longer a prerequisite for office. It's a little frightening of a world we're living in today. It gives you almost a sense of hopelessness, right? Hmm. We're having an increased amount of natural disasters a nice way to say that man didn't bring it on, or did we? We're spinning out of control, which is causing great anxiety amongst people. Oddly enough, Paul warns Timothy of this hour over 2,000 years ago. If you ever wonder if the Bible's true or not, you have to wonder how a book that is written so many years ago, so many centuries, foretells of today. In 2 Timothy 3, he says, But understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress. Have you ever heard that word? Are you stressed out? Hard to deal with. Hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate, greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant and contemptuous boasters, 
They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce haters of good. They will be treacherous betrayers, rash and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements, vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. For although they hold a form of piety or true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. You know, no matter whether it's been a good day or a difficult day, God still amazes me. Because with all that, knowing all that, he still has a plan. See, he's not hopeless. He has a plan to redeem all of it. That plan requires you and me. So as we prepare to enter into this new year, we join Christians across the world to seek God for direction and wisdom by fasting and praying corporately as one man. This is why this is a fast that we ask the whole body to participate in. We're coming before God as one man, this one church together, and it's happening all over the globe. Churches all over are taking this time to seek the Lord, not just for individual direction, but wisdom for his glorious church, local and universal. Intentional fasting and prayer causes us to set time aside to examine our own hearts, to get some attitude adjustments, and then reboot. Just as important as it is to rebu reboot your computer in order to get updates, so it is when we fast and we pray. We take the time to turn it off, turn off all of our normal stuff, take away doing all the normal things, to reboot and get all the updated information that we need for the next season. That's why fasting is important. It's not something we all love, although after the holidays, we all want to go on a diet because we have now gained 10 pounds or more because we've eaten all the goodies. And it's a great thing to start the new year off that way. It's way beyond the natural and the physical. It's a very important thing. It's an absolute necessity for our future. In 2016 is a year to continue to pursue God. Pursue is the word for the week that we are going to use. We're going to, not only is he running after us and he's been pursuing us, but we're going to take this week and we're going to pursue him. And we're going to find out what he has. We're going to run after him. Because only he holds the keys to life and the keys to hope. Because when we just stop and listen to the news and listen to everything around us, it's pretty easy to get discouraged. But my God is way bigger than all of this. Only his perfect love can cast out all our fears. You know, you will find, as I'm going to read through this today, that all the prophetic words line up. None of us spoke to each other. None of them have my notes, nor did I have theirs. God is going to allow our hearts to trust again. He does bring hope to the hopeless, rest to the weary, strength for our weaknesses, healing to our bodies, our souls. So as we fast and pray together, we seek to hear his voice. We pursue him. We chase after him. We don't give up. We continue to follow wherever he leads, and we are preparing to engage in the battlefield. Because the word pursue implies there's adversity. It implies a war. So it is in the midst of chaos and uncertainty that God brings order that his spirit hovers over the darkness and over the things that have no shape, and he creates beautiful new things, just like he did in the beginning. 
As darkness is covering the earth, as promised by the prophet of old, Isaiah, his glory is also being revealed. Light is shining brighter as the world is growing darker. His glorious church is recognizing who they are, who they belong to, what their purpose is here on earth, not when I get to heaven, here. This true church is rising to answer the call. We're rising and we're going to purify ourselves so she will not have any spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any unsightly problems. The church, the church of God has the solutions to the problems of the world. Not a politician, not a pastor, not any individual, but the church, the glorious church. Do you want to be a part of the glorious church? Do you want to be a part of the solution or do you want to just be a part of the problem and complain and whine? We have a choice to make, ladies and gentlemen. We have to believe that the church will have the answers and the world is getting so desperate she's about ready to listen. The, so don't get discouraged by the darkness. God's getting them ready to hear. The light is about ready to invade their world. This church will not accept a defeated end because she knows that her king is the king of kings. Okay, we had a musical this year. We called it a moment with the king. We still have a palace here that we set for that stage. And it reminds me that moment with the king is not just something we do at Christmas. It's not just something we do for a special season. But a moment with the king can change everything. A moment with the king can change the world you and I live in. It can change the course of where it's on its way to. But it does require our engagement. This glorious church is to be a representation of God, his greatness. What does that look like to you? For me, it's people loving God passionately, pursuing him with all their heart, their soul, their mind, serving him with unity and love, awaiting Jesus' return for his love, the church, his bride that has prepared herself for him. This glorious church is ready to bring God to their world through a personal encounter with their heavenly father, a personal commitment to further his kingdom here on earth now, a personal engagement of worship and prayer and fellowship with the body of Christ, training to understand his word and ways in order to embrace her destiny. So all these things take time, effort, determination, and the pursuit of things above transcends all earthly thinking. When we see things from God's point of view, our world begins to shift and grow. Every church has a specific purpose and a unique calling. I must know what Word of Life's call is. I think Word of Life is the best church around. I hope that doesn't offend anybody here that might attend another church. I hope you think your church is the best church around. Just like I think, I hope that each spouse thinks their spouse is the best spouse in the world. Because if you don't, there's a problem, right? So it's okay to think your church is the best church, right? So Word of Life is the best church. I happen to be lucky. I choose to pastor this church, by the way. It is a choice of ours. It's not something that I have to do. It is something that Pat and I choose to do, just to set the record straight. Okay, we love this place, we love this people, we love where God has called us to, and we are excited about where God's taking us to. We may not have it all figured out, I may not be able to tell you every you know, checklist down of exactly how it all goes, that's the beauty of it all, it's a journey, it's an adventure. Welcome to the adventures, okay, so we're really excited here about what God's going to do. And as a local church, we have several prophetic words defining our purpose. We did not choose these things, by the way, because I might have chosen a little differently, given those options. <laughs> but they were made known to us by God through his earthly mouthpieces. His prophets still speak today. Our job is to hear the word, believe the word, and then respond as opportunities unfold. We have seen the fulfillment of many promises in the last several years, and once again, God is faithful and he has managed to prove himself time and time again. Things that were impossible in the natural are happening because God said they would happen, not because I said they would. A theme passage in the Bible was repeatedly given to this house and to my mother, who was the founding pastor, for those of you who might be visiting. Isaiah 54, 
was her theme chapter. And you can read the whole thing at home. You have to, let me give you just a quick background. My mother uh, could not have children in the natural. She adopted me, my parents, and I was very fortunate to be rescued. So this, ver this chapter starts with, sing, O barren, you who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who did not travail with a child. For the spiritual children of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right hand and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. I'm here to say that's coming to pass. I'm here to say that a woman who had no children has many children. I'm here to say her children are across the earth. I'm here to say the word of God is true. I'm here to say that God says that that scripture still applies today. And the thing that we're about ready to engage in in 2016 is about enlarging the places of our tent. It is about the curtains of our habitation being stretched out and lengthening cords and strengthening the tent pegs. Bishop Miller was on, uh, had a little clip on YouTube, and he used the same scripture. And I'm just like, you know, it's awesome when you, the Spirit of God is what, who's in charge, okay? It's not individuals. We're all just listening, okay? And he said this, you have to determine from the beginning how large you want to grow, your goals, your vision, what you want to accomplish. If God has a vision, we have to ask what goals, where do we have to lengthen our cords to reach what we couldn't reach before? And in order to strengthen the pegs and stakes, we have to ask what things in our life do we have to solidify because st stakes and pegs have to go into solid ground. It can't be messed up, okay? It's got to be solid. It's got to be deep. So as we're going to grow and stretch and we're going to determine how big we're going to get, we've made a decision we're going to grow. We have to say, what basics do we have to champion? We can't enlarge the place of our capacity. We are at a genesis of something, the beginning of 2016, and we need to approach it with great joy, not regret. We must embrace our future. We need a greater passion and joy for this new year. So we have been challenged in prophecy to reproduce what God has given us here. Multiplication must happen in order for life to go on in the natural, correct? If children are not born, life ends, correct? This was the charge to Adam and Eve in the beginning, to be fruitful and multiply. We are entering a season this next year to do our best to take the truths that God has entrusted to us and make them exportable to those that God brings to us. We are frequently being asked how to do this or that, and it's time for us to have an answer that is concise and doable in all places. God has repeatedly told us since 1983 that we would be a prototype and that he would duplicate the pattern all over the country. And he specifically said, this prophecy was actually specifically over my mother, he said it would happen with her not being there, but by others who were trained by her. He told us that we would need to do what to do in order to accomplish this. In 92, he said, he brought you to this mountain to build a city of refuge. This house is a house of Levites. You're not just an, any old congregation. You've been placed on this mountain in the environment you're in in order that you might be trained diligently. It's like Bible training. It's intensive, intensive training. I believe this with all my heart that God says there's going to be leaders. He's going to send leaders to this habitation, to this mountain, the city of refuge. People are going to come and they're going to seek you out. That was flat out impossible in 1992 when that was given. He went on to say, when the tree has its fruit, when you understand who you are, recognize the peculiarness of the calling and place and purpose, you're going to see a glorious fulfillment of that which he has spoken. 
and put in her heart a long time ago. You came up here to build a refuge, and God spoke to you to do it. He said it's going to be a place of leadership training. It's going to be a house of Levites that people are going to come, and they are going to be refreshed. They are going to be built up. It is going to be like they are going to come in, and then they are going to go out. They are going to come in, and they are going to go out. Have we been seeing this lately around here? Has anybody else been watching this happen? Okay. Awesome. Glad you're on my page. So the Lord went on to say, but you are going to have to set some things straight. You're going to have to build a greater change of administration. You're going to have to look for those upon whom I have put my wisdom and listened to my voice and set them in a place so that as this work grows, it will have the proper supervision in every department. That's what 2016 is about. Get ready. God also said... See, we just got a lot to hear about what God said, so I'm going to race through this, okay? He released a seed of vision in the beginning of this ministry. God planted the seed, but within the seed, there are generations to come within it. And every generation is releasing another level of presentation and bringing things to a brand new level. It's fun if you look at the history of your vision and you know where you're coming from, because if you don't know where you come from, you won't know where you're going. So... If you're not coming or going, that's the problem. So anyway, so you look at the vision and you see the seed, what God imparted here, and then you begin to see the generations of seed that are within that seed that will begin to double and triple the anointing because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. I'm really not interested in anything else. I'm not interested in professionalism. I'm not interested in rock stars. I'm not interested in whatever. I'm interested in the anointing that breaks every yoke Okay, so the anointing is going to double and triple. We have multiplication going on here. Uh, where are we? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we will see a transformation and we will see change. We are living in a whole new generation. And with that comes new levels of presentation. And I just hear the Lord saying he's putting a cutting edge anointing upon this house for you to bridge the gap, for you to be able to go over to a brand new level, and that the third generation inheritance is upon this house. In other words, this is not just about the McDonald family. Okay, this is about you. This is not just about me and Pat and my kids and their kids. This is about word of life. Okay, so I just want to make that really clear. This double, triple anointing is on you. Got it? Okay, I got the double, you got the triple, those of you that are younger than me. <laughs> okay, so pick it up. Uh, it says, and what you've done in Miwok is going to be reproduced in various places. You're going to train people to do what you did. Some people have been training church planters, but I hear the Lord say, you're going to train people how to raise up cities of refuge. Places of refuge, centers of hope, and centers of supply cities of refuge you will raise up a school of ministry it will be a school that will raise up not only fivefold ministers but all the ministering gifts ministries of mercies and help and you'll train up christian business leaders christian artists and yes there will be a school of worship and yes you will have cds recorded of the worship because if you thought i was giving you good original songs before it's nothing compared to what is coming the lord says i'm going to pour song after song after song worship team put your hands up i want you to receive it in the name of jesus song after song after song from the throne of god it's going to be poured out in 2016. I'm here to declare the year is here. We saw it at the musicale, and it's going to keep going. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm a little excited, okay? Sorry. I'm keeping you over, but it's okay. You'll be good. <laughs> okay, so melodies from heaven are going to come to the people in this body, and you will weep when you hear some of these songs, for you will know you are hearing a new sound. You will even begin to see new manifestations. <clears throat> I will teach the creative people in your church how to dance in a new way. Thank you, Lex. <laughs> he said he would teach us. That means we need a teacher. Thank you, Lex. <laughs> okay, so here we go. <laughs> Just don't ask me to be on the dance team. <laughs> You'll be really sorry. <laughs> I cannot dance. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I will teach you to do things that are so outside the box of what you have learned you will just be in amazement and say, God, only you. 
could have done this. And the Lord says, I have called you to be teachers of teachers and those that would oversee others and train them for the work of the Lord. And you say, Lord, why? In this little remote place, out in the middle of nowhere, who even knows that Miwok is on the map? God does. Hmm. The Lord says, I put you on this mountain because I'm going to make you a sign and a wonder of what I said to Elijah. I called him up to the mountain and I said, it's not about the fire, it's not about the earthquake, it's not about the wind, it's about my still small voice. And many will come to this mountain because they have heard there are people that can teach me how to hear the still small voice of God. And you will raise up a prophetic generation of young people that will blow, blow the doors off of the devil's kingdom. That's your purpose if you want to know. It's to blow the doors off of the devil's kingdom. Are you ready? I'm going to put a fire and a zeal in the youth that I bring from far and near to this place. There will be an amazement at what I do through the young people, says the Lord. So get ready, get ready, get ready, because the best is yet to come. We're launching several things this year. Some of these things are efforts of getting prepared to export what God has taught us, what he's asked us to do. We understand that our way is not the only way, but it is a way that God has directed us, and he wants it to be available, for whatever reason, for others to use so they don't have to go through as much pain as we did. We can expedite their journey if they learn from us what not to do. I can tell you more what not to do than I can tell you what to do, because I have a lot of bruises and scars from the wrong, okay? We also need to streamline and become more efficient in order to continue to walk into new ministry opportunities that present themselves. So we will be joining the 21st century and using some digital scheduling software to help us. God bless the organizers and schedulers of this house, Rachel, Peniel, Cindy, and all the different ones, Mike Murtaugh, God bless you. You guys are amazing. We hope that this is going to help after we get through the first six months of pulling our hair out. But anyway, <laughs> you know how software is. But I want to show a video real quick right here of what's coming, if you guys can do that. So, on January 24th, that's a great day. Ladies, you don't have to make fellowship. Ron Hamilton's coming with tri-tip and chicken for y'all. <laughs> Hospitality team, you have the day off. Hallelujah. Okay, so on January 24th, we're going to be launching Believers in Action. That means grateful people who wish to walk out their convictions and callings, understanding that it is by giving our lives to God we will truly be fulfilled. Believers in action recognize that Jesus came to earth to show us how to live, and they now wish to be the current representation of the Father so that the world can still see him today. This church has always had a spirit of excellence and servanthood. 
you have been a house of Levites serving God and his people. This is just a continuance of this honor because it's an honor to serve him. The name, believers in action, declares that the heart of love is the motivating factor behind what we do. We love him because he first loved us. We're embracing his command to follow in his footsteps and serve one another in love. We've launched our school of ministries, Spirit, Crosswalk, and the School of the Prophetic over the last couple of years. In 2016, we're launching the School of Worship. In two weeks, the worship team is meeting together, and they're going to take three days to pray and to talk and to come with, up with that for a seminar for other worship leaders because we've been approached multiple times. So you guys need to be praying for them. You need that the wisdom of God comes upon them, that God gives them something reproducible that they can take take to other places. We're excited. We're um, this year, as I stated earlier, the worship team wrote their first song collectively as a team. They sang it at the musicale, He That Is Mighty. This song exemplifies our heart. It articulates our thankfulness and declares our God as an almighty God who can do anything. We know that this song is the seed of the future. Promises for songs of deliverance, songs of praise and worship to come forth from within. I want to say this, tomorrow night we're meeting with the worship team, with the choirs, with the firebrands, with fresh fire, whoever's in worship ministry, if you're just in the congregation, you should be in worship ministry, okay? That's because this is not a spectator sport, by the way. But I want to say this, there is room in the scriptures for the psalmist, for the one who sings a song of deliverance to someone captive in the audience. It's just as important as corporate worship. The choirs that sang and brought the presence of God down. We're going to be gathering corporately this week to pray together, to seek the heart of God, and to get future assignments from the throne of grace. We're asking that all of you come as often as you can, but especially when we pray for ministries that you are involved in. All are welcome at every prayer time. It's not exclusive, because it's all about the body of Christ coming together in unity to pursue God and all he has for us. As I said, there'll be your printouts are over there. But if you can put the slides up real quick, I want to just go through it with you. On Monday night, as I said, we're doing all the worship ministries. We're praying for new songs, new expressions of movement. In him, we live and move and have our being. Worship warriors, it's ready to war, ready for battle. We're going to do that at 7 o'clock. We're going to meet Tuesday morning. We're trying not to consume every night of the week, okay? So Tuesday morning, we're going to pray for the United States and the nations. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Hmm? The answer's not in one person or one political party. The answer's in you. If my people, if, that means you have a choice. If my people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. That's what Tuesday morning's focus is going to be. On Wednesday, we're going to pray for a fresh start. I believe if we're fasting, the Bible says in Isaiah 58, there's a purpose to the fast of God. It's to break the bands of wickedness and loose the prisoner. If you have found yourself bound up, get yourself here and we'll get you unbound. Okay. Side note, the high school class is going to go directly to the Life House on Wednesday night and have your own special time to pray with each other. Kenan and Sierra will be home. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> More importantly, Adeline will be home. Anyway, <laughs> for the visitors, that's my son, daughter-in-law, and granddaughter. Anyway, <laughs> um, but they have a message for you. We have to make sure that we create a space for this next generation 
that's rising. We want to support them in every way. We want to see them grow and become all that God's called them to. See, they're des- they've been called to blow those doors off the devil's kingdom, so guess who's knocking pretty hard on their doors? So parents, I need you to help you get your kids where they belong. More importantly, where you belong. Thursday, 6.30 in the morning, we're going to pray for wisdom. <laughs> Godly wisdom. It's pure. It's peaceable. It's easily entreated in order to bring the gospel of the kingdom to our world. If you haven't noticed, the world out there is a little scary. We need to be wise as serpents, harmless as a dove. We need to learn how to speak the truth in love. There's people out there speaking the truth, but not in love. Where's it getting them? It's getting a lot of things riled up because they're not speaking the truth in love. Truth and love must go together. It's an absolute. Friday evening, a rising generation, all the young adults, the youth, the junior church, you have been born to be deliverers of your hour. You have been born to be deliverers to this ungodly world that you live in. We want to pray over you. We want to believe God for you. We want to lay hands on you. We want to lay hands on those that are instructing you. We want to see God move in your behalf. And then on Saturday morning, we want to pray over all the elders, the deacons, and the heads of all the ministries. That includes prison, cleanup. I mean, we have over what, 70 ministries. Is that what you tell me, Jonathan? 70 ministries in a church of 300. God bless it. 70 ministries <laughs> and church. We want you here. We want to pray over you. We want to ask God to give you wisdom. We want him to put a new um, deposit in you and how to shepherd the people that you work with. How not just to complete a task, but to shepherd those that God's entrusted you in their care. Hmm. So, to close this out, I'm going to ask the worship team to come, and we're going to sing my favorite song this year. He that is mighty has done great things and will do greater things in 2016. This is going to come through prayer, worship, connecting with one another, and pressing into all God has for us. We will pursue him. We will not be a barren woman. We will have multiple seeds. We will have children. We, each one of us have children, people that we've poured into, people that we've put seeds into, and some of those seeds have been there for years and years and years, and God is beginning to water and cause those seeds to sprout and cause those seeds to come forth. And we aren't barren, and we are believing that he is enlarging us. He is causing us to break out on the right and left. So let's all stand. Let's embrace embrace our future because it is God that's going to cause us to move into all these things.